It, yeah, yeah. So I, when 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 they had the scene where the mom took her into the room, it sounded like she was taking her through the time portal. They didn't show yeah. us what was going on. Right. I was sitting here wondering, what does she do? Is she it's is she putting her in time somewhere so that she can pop yeah. back out? What is she doing with her? And we find out at the very end, she gave her a Tony Stark arm. <laughs> right. Like, I, yeah. I mean, literally, the only thing that thing is missing is a cannonball out the hand. That's all yeah. she's missing. It but, might have that. We don't know. True. It might have that. I, yeah. I think a lot of what they did was for setup to next season. Um, right. You know, how did you guys feel about the conversation Atticus had with his long lost Asian lover in that bar when basically he said that we are all family? And y'all know there's another point I got to get to involving Ruby, but I'm going to save that for a little bit later. Cool. But how did you guys feel about that interaction between Atticus and his Asian former lover, who in essence, you know, she went up there and had a major role in the end in helping keep that magic in the family? I liked it because um, I thought he did her dirty, you know, mm. initially showed up at the house and saying like, what we had, I don't, I can't remember exactly what he said, but you know, what we had wasn't shit or something. He said, "Get the yeah. f out." I was just like, "Bro, like, that's just not right." See, like, <laughs> and you do you do You left her, understandably so. She was a Camijo, but then yeah. you started calling her. You know what I'm saying? She was, she let you go. You calling her, blowing, well, not blowing her phone up, but you hit up a few times. But then you just dissed her like this. So I was really happy when um, he apologized. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I thought it was absolutely necessary because that he just did her wrong. Uh, about the family thing, that was very interesting to me because you know, you know, she still loves him, and of course, he has a relationship with Jaya. And I, I it would have been kind of nice to see her reaction to all that, but um, overall, I'm, I'm glad he apologized. I, I thought it was very necessary, it made me respect his character a little bit more. Okay, Larry, yeah, I was, it was, I, I thought it was, um. Uh... I thought it was interesting and on some level, but to be honest with you, I felt like that that whole storyline with Jaya was just sort of they didn't like they did that whole episode with her explain who she was and how Atticus got to know her, but it was sort of they didn't really go much more into that relationship. Right, and it all seemed a little contrived. It sort it almost seemed like okay, we need to use her at the end, so we need to explain why she's a part of his life, but they didn't really. I, I I felt that was probably the weakest part of the series, and I liked her character. But I just yeah. I just didn't think they did enough with her. I felt like she should have been more of a part of this. I agree with you one hundred percent. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say I agree with both of you guys. I would have loved for them to maybe expand just a little more on her background. Uh, but you guys know they tried to do a whole lot in the series. This it's not a knock per se, but if they could have fit in a little bit more depth to the character and, you know, why she, I guess they tried to explain why she felt like she had these feelings of love, deep love for Atticus, but I felt like they could have done more considering the way she was an integral role in the ending. You know, I don't feel like her ending uh, manifests the way they presented her throughout the story. You know, yeah, um, yeah. I could have seen her just being a simple sacrifice then that would have worked. But she wasn't just a sacrifice. She had an intricate role, and then she survived on top of that. So that was how I felt about it. Yeah, and then, you know, the shaman at the, was it, episode six was saying that you haven't even began to, like, walk into or accept the darkness. Mm -hmm. So I was really interested in seeing how that played out, but right. it was just kind of like an offshoot of the spell, the binding spell that Liddy was trying to uh, fulfill. And it, it just for them when when Tick and and um, and Jaya were at the table at the bar, and uh, he was saying that they had like intertwining destinies. I, I can't suspend my disbelief that much. I mean, they, these two people are on opposite sides of the world, mm -hmm. and it, it, this is so coincidental that this spell is the darkness that she's supposed to go into. I, I don't know. Like you kind of said, uh, Larry, it did kind of seem contrived. Um, I, I wanted more especially just the whole Camino story of how that works, you know, how it would have worked if she would have killed 100 men instead of stopping at 99. And I'm still at this point, not entirely clear on that. Um, so I, I, I don't know, like, like both of y'all said, I, I wanted more uh, mm. from that. It, it was interesting. I liked it all. Just, just give me more of what you gave and, you know, mm. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I was okay with the fact that they were on opposite sides of the world and it was sort of this that brought them together because we've seen how strange things happen that bring people from all different places together. I mean, we've seen that you see it in real life, how you think like, what are, what are the chances of this person <laughs> yeah. from this part of the world meeting up with this person? And this is just the exact thing that you needed to make this wow. thing happen. And it does happen that way. And so I, I wasn't, that didn't bother me so much because that's just, that's reality in a lot of ways. That's that stuff really does happen. Not the being a Kamiko or anything, but you know, just people <laughs> meeting up. Oh my lord! <laughs> it would have been, been here. Cool. He go. It would have been, it would have been kind of cool if we would have saw her nine tails come out like on the bridge when she was fighting. Oh my uh, lord! Yes. You know, yeah. I, I was really hoping, um, you know, that would have been dope. But you know, it it it, <laughs> it just. They didn't do it, you know. So you know what I really wanted to see? I wanted to see at that ending, I wanted to see I wanted to see Hippolyta really utilize her powers and maybe bring back George to fight or something, mm -hmm. or maybe bring in those those uh you know those uh those those interdimensional uh you know women that, that she was with to bring them in to to fight something. I wanted to see something more than the way it went down. I mean it. I was happy that I was happy that it all turned out the way it did. You know, I like it when the good guys win often, but it just it felt sort of forced. That whole thing with the with the nine tail fox team and I like, but it just felt sort of forced. I liked her. I, I would have been more than happy if that would have happened. If we saw her maybe for two or three more episodes and she was more of a part of Atticus' current life. Mm -hmm. And maybe she loved, maybe she loved Atticus and Atticus was fighting mm -hmm. not to love her back because he was with Letty now. And then she makes this grand sacrifice that that kills her. Yeah. And maybe it even right. would have been great if, if she made this grand sacrifice, she gets killed, but really what's killed is the fox demon part of her and she's still alive as the human and now Atticus is, is forced or even is forced to deal with her if he's back to life or maybe Letty now feels some some responsibility to 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 help this woman or take care of this woman now that she's there in America with them after she helped him. I don't know, it would have been interesting something to be more than just what it was because it was like, okay, here I am, fox demon, boom, bound you all together and now I'm um, survived and good. Well, right. Letty and them are probably going to feel some kind of way toward her, period, because she did get up there, use a little fox demon powers, and she bound um, Christina and Atticus together so that they could get rid of the magic in Christina. So I'm sure that in next season, they're going to tie up some of these things that we're calling loopholes from this particular season to go into next season, and we're going to learn a little bit more about her, hopefully, and the thing that I think a lot of us want to know, are they going to find a way to bring Atticus back? What do you fellas think? Um, or or, or uh, is, it a, is it a wrap for George and Atticus? I think it's a wrap, unfortunately, hmm. because with the way things are happening now. So remember, if they do do a season two, I'm just kind of just throwing this out there, spitballing. I think it's going to take place like further on in the future, like okay. decades. You know, like D is grown. It could be to where, you know, when she's in the future with the hood. And it was some episode before to where they were saying that in the in the future that either Hippolyta or Tick went to white people were rioting, rioting. So I'm kind of thinking that, okay, maybe black people, I'm hoping, excuse me, that black people aren't oppressed anymore. You know, mm -hmm. white people don't have magic anymore to, you know, uh, oppress black people. So like white black people are coming up moving up the economic ladder and white people are mad about it and they're rioting or something like that uh and so i can only see that it happened like in the future like year I, I don't know what year but you know i don't i don't think it's gonna uh, season two is gonna take place next week um right. after these events i could be wrong um I, I i don't care you know what if you know what timeline they do they use i just want to see more content <laughs> Right. Um, but if I if I had to guess, I think it would take place in the future. And George and Tick are not coming back, unfortunately. I want them to, but I I, I don't think. Or maybe they go and get them from a different multiverse or something. I don't know. But well, you know, they don't went Marvel on us with multiverses and what may have you. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. we have a guest popping in. And it, it's, yeah. it's the yeah. homie Muchella. Yeah, I'm in there. Or maybe they go and get them. Yeah, I have to. You know, I have to say that. You know, looking at that Jonathan Majors, I am. Hi. Hey, What's up, Mooch? 
So Jonathan Major has like three movies in the works in production right now. So I mean, as far as him coming back, it may I mean he may have been like, look, y'all, it's been fun. I got other stuff to do. And he gave him one good season and now he's out. So okay. well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm 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 really excited though to see that Hippolyta. It looks like Hippolyta is gonna have a major role in the next season. And yes. I, if they have a next season, I'm looking forward to that. I hope they just don't do some, I hope they don't try and do a, uh, you know, a, a, a watchman type deal. Yo, so, what, you mean? what you mean by that? When they get one one and then oh, they yeah. just like, yo deuces, I'm out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like what she did with her arm. The oh, you, so arm? With Diana's arm. So you like that part, Moochie? Yeah, I like I like what she did with Diana's arm, how she did the mechanical um thing. Hi but, everybody. <laughs> hey, but Moochie, wouldn't you have liked for Diana to been on that bridge whipping trailer park trash yeah. ass? Yes, with with the um <laughs> what's that animal call? Did you guys see the flashback when they all yeah. um, show how Atticus um had her pet in the um what's I, what's the what's yeah, the, the monster thing she, he bailed he oh, bailed right. that monster to yeah. her yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, which now I, which, I did which want to say this go ahead I did want to say this about Christina because I joke and say she looks like some Aryan nation neo Nazi dude uh person or something <laughs> but in all seriousness I don't really think that Christina was racist. I think Christina wanted power, mm-hmm. and I think that she sort of was one of those people that saw so much potential and magic and power that that simple constructs of her time, like re- of our time too, of like race and gender, just simply didn't apply to her anymore. I don't think she. I don't really. I don't think she cared about them. I don't think they mattered to her at all. I think she simply wanted power. If she needed to use gender to get it, she would use it. If she needed to use race, she would get it. She would use whatever tool was at her disposal. But I don't think those tools meant anything to her except just as a means to an end. So you really don't think she had a disdain for black people? I don't think she did, honestly. Okay. Well, man, I, you- I think she. I think she just wanted power. I don't think she cared how she got it. So you you basically are saying that Stormfront was worse than Christina is what you're basically saying on this show. Well, Stormfront huh? was definitely was, Stormfront was clearly definitely. worse. Stormfront, Stormfront was purely a, a Nazi racist, horrible human being. So there's no doubt about it. <laughs> so let me let me ask you guys this because this you know we've got to talk about Ruby. We can't we cannot have this segment with Ruby. And I'm tell you what I was feeling. So you know that they had the scene where Letty talked to Ruby about helping them at their mom's gravesite, and Ruby basically said, "No, you only use me." Kind of paraphrasing what she said right, right. to um, Letty. All right. Then the, they're all packing up to go to Autumn. We know we're about to have the big climax, and Ruby just instantly pops up with the blood. My spidey sense went up, and then. <laughs> Next thing we know, they riding along in the car now, and y'all know how movies and TV shows do this. Everybody's all happy before the big battle scene in a car, and then all of a sudden the damn deer jumps out and kills everybody. So I was waiting for that scene to happen. Didn't happen. And when that didn't happen, fellas, I knew good and damn well that that was not Ruby in that car. I knew it was Christina. But the question is, we learned that Ruby is bisexual, is Ruby officially dead or not? Brandon, I'll give it to you first. I don't think so. Initially, I thought she was dead. I did, and I was like, damn, I was I was mad. I was that was the one of the worst things I hated about them. So I'm like, even though I had my problems with Ruby, I'm like, how are you gonna kill her off screen like that? That's just whack. You know, she deserved more. But uh the second time I watched it, I don't think she's dead because you know, prior Christina was like, Hey, to have him in this state, I mean to get the potion, you know, they have to be in a comatose state. And I know that she, they showed the flashbacks with Jaya when she was doing her thing, but I think that Ruby was still a, like in, in comatose state uh, in the bed. I don't okay. think she's dead. I think she's still alive in comatose state. Moochie, what you think? I think she's in a comatose state too because she says she had to keep them like that in order to get inside the body. Hmm. So, Larry. Oh, I'm sorry, Moochie. No, that's okay. Larry, so, it's on you. 
so when all this went down, I I knew that soon as as soon as Christina gave them that vow that vial, I knew that it wasn't Chris. Uh, was uh, when when Ruby gave him the vial, I knew it wasn't Ruby because when Christina showed uh, Ruby the vial, the vial barely had anything in it. It was a little tiny amount of blood, and I think it was like some finger clippings and something else. It was a very small amount in that vial. And when she handed that vial over to Letty, it was a full thing of blood. So I knew that it wasn't the same vial. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, that was, I was like, this is not Ruby. This is Christina and Ruby's in Ruby's skin. So, no, so both, of was, knew, both of y'all knew before the reveal that it really wasn't. Ruby. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Michelle, Michelle, what about you, ma'am? Did you, did, did you figure I it out? Think I, I wish they would have showed the details of how she got her to get her into that comatose state. Because they only showed it when, when when they did the flashback of uh when you know how when uh GI connected to yeah. uh Atticus and Christina connected to Atticus and Christina, that's when you saw everybody's life and you seen her you didn't actually see her kill her or or put her in that state. You just saw her for one moment and then you saw her laying in the bed. Yeah. Here, here's the inter Here's another interesting point is that about Christina. Christina, she keeps saying, if you do this, I promise I won't do that. Christina's actually a woman of her word. She keeps her word. And, and we see that at the very end when she promised Ruby that she wouldn't hurt her sister. And, and as, as, uh, as Letty's falling down out of that tower, and Christina's thing, her, her, she's watching her fall, and she's saying the words of in the in the in the language of Adam to restore her invulnerability. A uh, uh, you know, uh, mark on there. So we see her wake up, and when she comes back, that mark is back on there. Hold on, is that what she, she was? She did doing? keep her word. She did yeah, keep her she word. kept she her word, and that was why because she promised Ruby that she would not hurt her sister. Mm -hmm. To me, that is the equivalent of racist white supremacists giving slaves butter biscuits back in oh. the day. Wow! Little, like little, 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 little crumb. Butter okay. I'll give you. I'll give you a little potion. I'll give you a little invulnerability. But I'm finna be immortal. You know what I'm saying? Like we get the crumbs while you get the whole piece of the pie. That, but that's look, check this out. I guess if you're invulnerable, does that not, in essence, make you immortal? Um, not no, because you can still die in certain ways. Well, I mean, I'm not like a, a science. Yes, fiction. you are. You just like me and Larry. You watch Marvel. If you're invulnerable, the only thing that can kill you, I guess, is old age. And why would old age kill you when the things that kill you with old age are, you know, biological issues? So if you're invulnerable, is that not the same as being immortal? Oh, uh, you know, I can't argue well, with that. Yes and no, but here's the problem. You're not really invulnerable if someone knows how to remove that invulnerability. That's now, a good point. I don't know. I don't know if the person, it seemed to me like the only person that could remove it is the person that put it on you. So it seemed to me like Letty would be best served learning how to do that herself and putting it on herself because like her father, um, Christina's father he had interim vulnerability, and the only way that, that he was able to have it removed is for him to remove it himself, which is what he did when he first tried to uh, when he first tried to uh, do the the um, the ritual, and so he had to remove it so that he can accept the, the immortality. But I think the only way that it's removed is the person who puts it on there removes it. So as long as Christina had put that on Letty, Letty is always going to be vulnerable to uh, to Christina. Well, no. not now, maybe because Christina's magic is gone. She's bound for magic, so I don't even know. Maybe the maybe that 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 invulnerability doesn't even isn't even effective anymore. Maybe she has to put it on there herself now. Hold on, I gotta go back and watch it now. Y'all are telling me that when Lady was falling to her death, Christina Ruby was saying a spell to bring her back at that moment. She was oh. saying it. No, she never. She never had to be brought back. She said the spell to put the the invulnerability back on her. So when she hit the ground. She hit the ground, but she was never going to be dead. And oh. then you, they showed the mark. She pulled up her shirt, and the mark was back on her stomach. Yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw that. I just, I didn't know how it came back. That was like, I was just confused. So I got to go back. I'll go back and look at it. Well, that's, see, that's why, that's see, why we Negro, see Special Negro, you got to hang out with us regular folk. <laughs> 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 see, that's why we have these discussions so that we can explain things and put things in detail 
to try to make it connect for people 